Hey guys, it's Bub here, and today we're going to be taking a look at an operating system that I've never actually installed before. We'll be taking a look at Windows Whistler build 2419, which was an earlier build of Windows XP Beta. Now, if you don't know anything about Windows Whistler, Windows Whistler is the beta of Windows XP, and it went through a lot of different stages where it really changed and it really showed what could have been Windows XP. For this video, I chose 2419, which I think is one of the most interesting builds just because of the way that it looks, so we'll be going over an overview of it as well as an install tutorial. Now, we'll be installing this build in VMware Workstation 15.5 Pro, so of course if you're using something like VirtualBox or VMware Player, it should be somewhat similar. So of course we're just going to go ahead and create a new machine with typical, we're going to use the ISO file. Now for this, I'm going to select Windows XP Professional, although I think you can select 2000. Now of course, this is not Windows XP, so we're going to name it Whistler2419. We're going to adjust our hard drive size, so for this, I'm just going to give it 30 gigs. And from here, we can customize our hardware. So just for fun, let's give it two processor cores, give it 8 gigs of RAM. Nah, I don't think it'll do that. Let's give it four. Now from here, the first thing you have to try and do is boot into the BIOS. And I say this because we do have to change the date and just for this video, I'm just going to put January 15th, 2001. Now, I recommend just sometime in January 2001. I don't think it has to be specifically the 15th. In fact, maybe it was actually the 19th. I'm not entirely sure, so I'll just put the, uh, the 20th just to be safe. Save and exit. And now as we can see, after the installer actually loaded, we can see that it looks almost identical to an XP or 2000 setup with its blue background and text-based installation. Now one thing that we don't see in the final build is of course the setup notification that tells you you're installing a evaluation version of Windows Whistler. So we can of course click continue and then click continue to set up Windows Whistler. After that, we're greeted with the Windows Whistler licensing agreement. Now I believe this build does have a time bomb of 180 days, which this does describe the 180 day license in full. So if you ever bored, maybe you can read this and see if it says anything interesting. Now to do this, we just have to press F8 to agree. Now from here, since we set up a 30 gigabyte hard drive, we can just click on the unpartitioned space and format using the NTFS file system. Now doing this, this is basically like installing any other Windows XP operating system. It'll go through the same process besides the evaluation period notices, but like the formatting and the installing and the copying data, it's all the same. It looks exactly the same. It's very similar in many ways. After the text-based installation, we're brought to something that looks very similar to Windows XP. It's got the same bars at the top and bottom. It might have a different background with less clouds and the side over here with collecting information. This does look a little bit different. But other than that, this is very similar to Windows XP. From here, we can choose our regional and language options. So we're just going to go with the default options that are set here, and then we can type in a username. We can click Next, and now enter the 25 character product key that is everywhere online almost. So I'll go ahead and enter that now. Usually, a computer name does not matter, but in this instance, it kind of does, because on your login screen, it's displayed on the side. And typically, when you have a name like Microsoft-Q0FRPU, it doesn't look very nice. So for this, we're just going to type Windows VM. We can, of course, leave the default time set because we need it to be January of 2001. And now we can select Networking Settings. So from here, we can just use Typical, leave it in Work Group, and then allow it to continue. If you use the link in the description which I've provided, you'll get a Windows Whistler error. Now what you can do is you can just click No, it just asks you to view the log file, but otherwise Windows will work perfectly fine without that. Now from here, we get our first glimpse at the startup screen. Now in my opinion, that looked very modern and very colorful, and in my opinion, it looked even better than the startup screen on Windows XP. I really wish they would have kept going with that theme. From here, we can click Yes, which it won't fully adjust to whatever your full dimensions are. We're going to have to change those separately. Now from here, we are officially entering the out-of-box experience. Now we just saw an introduction video to the out-of-box experience. Now I can explain this. I'm assuming that they wanted to be a copy of macOS for this. And I say this because the Windows XP source code leak recently showed a very macOS-like theme. So I can see where they're coming from with that. Just by taking a look at the design of the out-of-box experience, we can see that it looks almost identical to the Windows XP. It has the two bars at the top and bottom. It does have Merlin, which I believe he made it to the final build, which we can move him anywhere in this build. Now, from here, we can decide if we want to connect to the internet. However, I'll be able to click no, we'll connect directly to the internet. 
We can activate later because we already entered the product key. And then click no, I am the only one who wants to use this computer. Otherwise, if we click yes, it will ask us to enter more accounts just like Windows XP does. Now from here, we do have to enter another name. So for example, let's just type in Windows. Windows is ready to use. Some other things that I would like to point out on the out of box experience is that it is very similar to Windows XP, like I did say. There was a lot of focus in the internet setup. If you chose yes, I want to connect to the internet. And for me, setting up and installing Windows took longer than it did on Windows XP, which in my opinion is kind of weird considering this should be smaller than XP. And now after we click finish, we'll be brought to the Windows logon screen where it will tell us that it's applying our personal settings. And here we are. This is the Windows Whistler build 2419 desktop. The first thing that we have to do, of course, is make sure that this is full screen by going here and selecting 1920 by 1080. Let's take a look at the desktop and window elements. The first thing that you're going to notice is the watercolor theme. In my opinion, the watercolor theme looks way better than the Windows XP Luna theme. I wish they would have had an option for both. I really feel like this is more modern than the Luna theme. When we have two windows open, we can see that now this back window is a solid blue but when we switch, the watercolor theme is back. This shows when a window is active and inactive. So this window is active right now, so those dots go away and the border is a solid blue. But now we want this one to be active, this is all blue, and the watercolor theme dots are now there. The desktop itself does resemble Windows 2000 a lot with its 2000 style taskbar, its 2000 style icons, and the new Windows XP Recycle Bin icon. Let's take a look at the start menu. By far, this is one of the most interesting things about this build. It looks like a combination of Windows 2000, some kind of beta build, and Windows XP. However, this start menu does really set the foundation for the Windows XP start menu. There is now a frequent apps section as well as pinned apps. I believe that Windows 2000 did not have this, but it did make it to the final build. So if we go down here and let's just open MSN Explorer, now MSN Explorer is in our frequent apps as well as WordPad. Now we do get quick access to stuff like my documents and my computer, as well as control panel, help, search, and run. Clicking turn off our computer, it does, like I said, resemble Windows XP, except it's a little bit different. There's a different font, a different logo, different buttons, as well as a different color scheme entirely. So like I said, this resembles Windows XP in a lot of ways, but it's just different. Now, as you would expect, there are a combination of both Windows XP and Windows 2000 apps. Windows Media Player is still a 2000 app. Outlook Express, I believe, is somewhere in the middle. MSN Explorer is, again, somewhere in the middle. As well as Internet Explorer, this is an older version. There are a lot of accessories still included. However, they are the older versions, as you can just tell by the icon. Taking a look at the pre-installed games, this is almost the entire list of games that was included in Windows XP, including the beloved 3D Pinball. When we click log off, we'll be brought to our login slash logout screen. As you can see, this is a very white background, and in a dark room, this really blinds you. Like I said earlier, we do have our computer name on the left side, as well as a list of our Windows accounts. The multi-user setup here is, in my opinion, nicer, as we don't have a split screen here. However, in, however, in this setup, I believe that I would prefer the Windows XP over the Windows Whistler simply because of the background color and just how blinding this is. And so with that, that concludes this video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're new around here and tell me what you think about Windows Whistler build 2419. And with that being said, make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one.